Rated T for Teen. Hi, and welcome to the first of five videos that will show you how to play World in Conflict. In this video, I will talk about the basic gameplay in multiplayer. When you first join a server, you're asked to join a faction. There are always two sides to choose from, and you can either select the side by yourself, or click on Automatic Team to join the team with the least number of players. After choosing a faction, you pick the role you will be playing in the game. The game consists of four different roles. We have infantry for soldiers, trucks and jeeps, support for various supportive vehicles, armor for tanks and APCs, and air for helicopters of different kinds. All these roles have their own strengths and weaknesses, but for this demo I'll be showing you some tanks. When you've selected your role, you're shown an overhead view of the battlefield. See this area down here? This is the area where I can place my drop zone. I can place my drop zone anywhere within its borders. The area can also change during the game and looks different depending on the map. This is called the Mega Map. You can go back to this view at any time in the game. Now as I place the drop zone, the camera is instantly going down to the battlefield in all its glory. With the mouse, you can move the cursor to the four edges of the screen to move the camera, like this. You can go up, down, and to the sides. You can also scroll the mouse wheel to move the camera upwards and downwards. The game is very scalable, so you can get in close to view the details. By pressing and holding the mouse wheel down, you can also look around freely using mouse look. By default, you move the camera around by pressing the W, A, S and D keys, like in your typical PC shooter. Combining all these different camera movement features, you get full control of your view and never get lost because of limiting camera views. But we're not here on a vacation, we're here to fight a war and to do that we need some units. Units are ordered through the reinforcement menu, which is displayed in the top right corner here. Here you can see the units that are available to your role. Each role has unique types of units. But you can also click these tabs to see units from other roles that are available to you. As you can see, not all units are available, and that's because they're exclusive for their particular role. Since I'm playing armor, I get all the tanks and APCs available. Right at the top you can see your reinforcement points, which are used to purchase units. Click on one unit, and the points will be temporarily drawn from your point bank. You can see the units you plan to order down at the bottom here. To cancel it, just click on them and the points will be returned. You can combine these points however you want, and you can even combine units from different roles. But it's worth noting that the units outside of your role are more expensive, and that it can weaken the properties of your role for the team. For now, I'm going to buy some tanks. I used the full point bank, all 6,000 points. Now this green smoke here represents my drop zone, so by clicking deploy now, We are airborne with your reinforcements, Tavarish Commander. I ordered the cargo plane to drop my stuff on my drop zone. We can see it come here in the distance. Alright, tanks. Now's a great time to show you how unit control works. Using the mouse, I can left click and select singular units, or left click and drag to make a selection box around them. I can also double left click on a unit to select all of the units of the same exact type. At the bottom here are icons representing every unit as well, and I can do the same thing here. As for movement, you use the right mouse button and click on the ground. The units you've selected will go wherever you right click.
You can also right-click on the units to move the camera to those particular units. Or double right-click to have the camera follow them automatically. Yes, carry on, we're on the move. And while driving might be fun, they have those guns for a purpose. This is war after all, and it's time to put these tanks to good use. Up ahead is a command point. In this particular game mode, the map is won by capturing and controlling command points that are spread out over the map. To capture a command point, you have to bring units into the connected circles, like these two. Oh, wait a minute. Looks like the enemy is onto this one here. The red color of this leftmost circle shows that there's an enemy presence there. About time to head in for an attack. At the moment, I can't see the enemy because the hills are blocking my view. But as the tanks approach, the enemy is uncovered and the tanks start attacking automatically. Now I'm not about to leave it up to my men to do this by themselves, so I'll make sure to move the tanks around a bit and flank the enemy. I can also focus their fire on specific enemies by selecting them and right clicking on the enemy. These enemy tanks are going to bite the dust. Now I can see the circle turn green as the enemy is gone and my units take the center of it. But that's not enough. To fully capture the command point, I have to capture both connected circles. By doing this, the domination bar in the top middle will push to my favor, and if pushed far enough as the time runs out, my team wins. I can also win by pushing the bar all the way to its rightmost end. And that's the basic gameplay of World in Conflict.